Hello again. Glad to see you're back for some more scripting with Weka. What we're going to cover in this lesson is building models and evaluating them. So the classes that we're going to touch upon in this lesson are Weka classifiers evaluation for evaluating classifiers, um, some classifiers, filters we've already seen in the last lesson, and some randomization stuff where we're going to use some Java SDK classes. So the first thing that we want to do is building a J48 classes fire. So I'm going to start up our Jython console again. And for this script, we will basically load some data, configure a J48 classifier, build it, and output the model. So first of all, the imports. Once again, our data source for loading data and our J48 classifier. Once again, we are going to load our data using our environment variable. This time we're loading the anil UCI data set. And since it's classification, we also have to set the class attribute. In this case, it's the last one. So with num attributes, you can determine the number of attributes in a data set. And with set class index, you can set which of these attributes is going to be the class attribute. However, since it's an API, usually starts counting at zero and not as one. So that's why we have num attributes minus one. Next thing is, we're gonna instantiate our J48 classifier and we're gonna set some options. In this case, we're changing the confidence factor from the default value of 0.25 to 0.3. With the data available now and the classifier configured, we can build it, which simply happens with a build classifier call supplying the data. And then, as a final step, we are outputting the model with a simple print statement. When we run that, we can see the model that is being output after built on the data. Now, that wasn't very hard. As a next step, we want to evaluate a model that we've built. And in this case, we're going to use cross-validation because there's no point in building a model if you don't actually know whether it's any good. So we're going to open a new tab and then import some more stuff again. In this case, we also need the evaluation class. And since we are cross validation, we also want to randomize the data. In that case, we're importing the random class. Okay, just like before, we're loading the anil UCI data set, setting the class attribute. Then we're configuring the same classifier again, confidence factor once again 0.3. And then we're sort of like setting up our evaluation. So first of all, we are initializing our evaluation class with the current data in order to obtain the class priors. And then we're calling the cross-validate model method of the evaluation class with the classifier template not built um, the data that we want to evaluate on, the number of folds, in our case we're doing tenfold cross-validation, and the random number generator initialized with a seed value of 1. After that finishes, we will have basically all the statistics inside the evaluation object, and we want to output some things. First thing is going to be we want to output some summary statistics. There's the so-called toSummary string method. If you look at the Java doc, you will realize there's actually several methods. Um, one with no attribute, one with a boolean attribute, and one with string and boolean attribute, like we are using here. Now, the difference between Python and Java is that Python doesn't have polymorphism. It has optional parameters and named parameters. So, in order for Jython to work, you basically have one method that has all the various parameters then available. And in this case, we have to provide a title for basically our summary string and that we don't want to output any complexity statistics, hence false. That is that. And since it's classification, we also want to output the confusion matrix, which you can do with the to matrix string. So when we're running the script now, we will see in the output now, our usual summary statistics of accuracy, what's missed, um, kappa statistic, all kinds of errors, um, coverage, and how many instances that were all together in the data set, almost 900 in the anil data set case. And the confusion matrix, 
that was also output and you can see there's hardly any instances that are not on the diagonal according to our misclassify ones should be only 14 so we have three here two there two there and seven there which is 14 so all is good the final script that we want to do in this lesson is how we can actually use a build model to make predictions so i'm going to open a new tab again and in this case like in the first script we are importing our data source for loading data in our j48 classifier we are once again loading a data set in this case we're not using the usual anneal data set but one that's been stripped down a bit um, it's the anneal train set but still class attribute in the same location so it's the last one setting that we are once again configuring our j48 classifier because we were happy with that configuration based on our cross validation results it results in excellent results then we are building our classifier on the data once again using the build classifier method and since we want to make predictions on unlabeled data we are now loading the unlabeled data in so in this case data set anneal unlabeled which basically has the same data set structure but just missing values for the class and we also set the class attribute for this one it is usually recommended that you compare your training and test slash unlabeled data whether they are actually compatible and you can use a method of the instances class called equal headers message which for telling whether two data sets are the same if you look at this code here the unlabeled data is checked against the training data and this will return a message but only in the case if they are different for instance not different number of attributes different types or different order of labels then it will output a message otherwise it will just output none or in the java case no so in case we have a discrepancy between our data sets then this will be output simply saying that they are not the same and for making our predictions finally since we now have our unlabeled data and our build model we basically just iterate through our unlabeled data row by row and then we obtain our class distribution by calling the distribution by instance method we want to know what the chosen class label is so we're using the classifier instance method which returns us in case of nominal at class attribute the label index starting with zero and in order to determine what the string label actually is we use the data set retrieve the class attribute and then determine the string value that is associated with that particular index and to actually output anything we're then outputting with a simple print statement our class distribution our label index and the associated label and running that you get an output like this first you get an array which is the class distribution then the index of the label and the label itself all separated by hyphens and at the bottom you can see you have one two three four five six labels all together in there so index five and the label is u in this case so what we've learned in this lesson is how to build a classifier we can output statistics from cross-validation that we've obtained from a classifier on a particular data set and we also used a build model to actually make predictions on new unlabeled data hope to see you next time